Well, a buyer who's long supported Cambridge stud is David Ellis. And last year, he was again Caracas' leading purchaser across the two-day premier sale. Tiakau Racing's enjoyed plenty of success on the racetrack this season in both New Zealand and Singapore. Recently, Kiwi Red caught up with David in between inspections to find out his thoughts on this year's sale. Is there 500,000? 500, 500,000 for... You look at the pedigree on the page, look at the end of it. Well, David, you've been the top individual buyer at Caracas for the, for the last nine sales. You've bought 110 yearlings over the last four years from the premier sale ring with enormous success. Horses like War Affair, uh, King's Chapel, War Horse, Princess Coop, Darcy Brown, Costa Viva, just to name a few. Which of those do you feel have been the most astute purchases? Well, probably um, Darcy Brahma, I think. Uh, he's given the owners a huge return on the racetrack as the champion two-year-old, champion three-year-old and champion four-year-old. And then at stud, he's earned over $30 million already in service fee income. And, of course, he's still a, a, a relatively young sire uh, that's leaving winners every week. Well, the tangerine colours of Tiaka Racing have made a lot of syndicate owners a lot of money over the years. No New Zealand horse has won more domestic stakes earnings than Prince's Coop, 4.1 million. Darcy Brahma, you mentioned another big success. Which ones have been your favourite? Well, I think King's Chapel was a real favourite. He's a horse that I bought at the premier sale for 35000 And, of course, he won a million on the racetrack. He's a champion sprinter miler, champion weight for age horse and Horse of the Year, and then we sold him to Windsor Park for stud duties, and now he's at stud in South Africa. So he was certainly one of my favourites. Another favourite was Marufati that, interestingly enough, I bought half an hour later for the same group of owners, and he was the champion two-year-old and went on as a four-year-old to win Group 1 races, and uh, the stable had a lot of fun with both those two horses but we've had so many good horses from Caracas. it's really unfair to um, single anyone out because um, we've just had um, so many people that have invested in these good horses and I'd hate to offend any of them. Well this season's flying for uh, Mark Walker in Singapore and of course Jason Bridgman here horses like Darcy's Dream Windborne, Wolf Whistle, all putting their hands up. Which have been the highlights from the season? I think the, the, the highlight has been Mark Walker winning three races on New Year's Day. That was a tremendous achievement. And we've had horses like um, Rockfast that we think are going to be real contenders in races like the um, Avondale Guineas over 2,000 metres. And he's a real live chance in the Derby. He's probably our best derby chance for, for some time. Um, we've got horses like Wolf Whistle, and we've got probably half a dozen two-year-olds that have won trials recently that we're really excited about, and we're really looking forward to racing them in the next six weeks. Well, last season your focus was on a buying colts with good stallion prospects from the sale. What will be the buying strategy this time round? Well, last year we bought horses to race in Singapore, to race in New Zealand and horses to race in Australia. And we'll be doing exactly the same this year. We've been really buoyed by the um, huge turnout that the race meetings have had in December and already in January. Terrific crowds. The betting turnover's up, and that will lead to increased stake money. So I think the tide's really turned for racing in New Zealand. I, th I think there's a lot of exciting times ahead, and we want to buy horses to take advantage of those good times coming. The strength of the catalogue at Karanka is always strong, but where do you see its particular strength this time? Well, it's full of stallions that just leave winners week after week, like Savabile, Darcy Brahma, O'Reilly. Uh, it's got horses, uh, new sires like Pua Moa, um, has um, left some really exciting individuals. It's a really solid catalogue, and uh, I think New Zealand Bloodstock have done a great job uh, getting so many nice young horses. There's um, quality horses coming from Australia uh, for the sale, a lot of fast net rocks in the sale. 
And uh, yeah, it's it's uh, an exciting catalogue. But what really impresses me as I go around all the farms is seeing the top class individuals, good, strong, good boned, sound horses. Uh, that um, I've seen some that will really be Derby, Oaks, two thousand guineas, thousand guineas contenders in the in the next couple of years. DC Ellis, Tiakia, David, congratulations to you and the team. Tiakao Racing we represented in the Karaka Million by the Jason Bridgman trained Windbourne. Windbourne's look very promising on the racetrack already, securing black type in the listed Murdoch Mule stakes. The daughter to Darcy Brahma was sold out of the select yearling sale last year by David Ellis for $100,000 and is raced by Fortuna Syndications. Well, it's just a lovely athletic filly and, um, you know, She's a compact filly, but she's just beautifully balanced and put together. And uh, for a Darcy Brahma, particularly strong, early developing type. I think uh, the first race just ran one on pure ability and uh, her sheer speed. You know, she's got a lot of speed. And then I think the second race, uh, she did a, a few things wrong early, uh, but then relaxed nicely and a very strong tempo and then showed uh, a bit of class to sort of overcome that and then finish off really strongly. So... Uh, that was another step up to stakes quality, so that was a very good run. And then <clears throat> coming out of that race into into her most recent run, I think you know her speed probably brought her undone. Um, just you know, going twelve hundred meters, you can't, you can't afford to be burning the candle at both ends. And you know, I think we've got a filly that's going to be competitive. She's she's got the speed. Um, we just need to just round her off the edges a little bit more and just get it a little settle a little bit uh, more in the in the early part of the race and. I think um, if she can drop the bridle early uh, and use that speed late, she's going to be very hard to beat. Not too worried about the barrier draw because um, I, I think she, you know she, it's a, it's a high pressure race, and we'll probably look to try and be midfield. So I think a, a middle draw to inner draw would be fine. Um, if, if she gets an outside gate, so be it. But uh, I think uh, a good track, plenty of pace, is going to be the be the key to her her chances. 